So the Samsung 9100 Pro is here. This is a blistering fast Gen 5 NVMe drive offering read speeds of up to 14,800 megabytes per second and write speeds of up to 13,400 megabytes per second. A lot will vary slightly depending on the capacity of the drive that you get. So just to put those speeds into context, this is the current flagship Gen 4 drive, the 990 Pro, and it has read speeds of up to 7,450 megabytes per second. So the 9100 Pro isn't technically Samsung's first Gen 5 NVMe drive. This is the 990 EVO Plus. It has four Gen 4 lanes, but it can also run with two Gen 5 lanes. But the fact that it only has two Gen 5 lanes, it means the read speeds are limited to 7,150 megabytes per second. Whereas I would say the 9100 Pro is their first proper Gen 5 NVMe drive, as it has a full four Gen 5 PCIe lanes, meaning it can reach these blistering fast speeds. So the 9100 Pro is available in one, two, and four terabyte capacities. The one terabyte version starts with an MSRP of $199.99 US dollars. The two terabyte version, which I've got here, starts at $299.99 US dollars. And the four terabyte version starts at $549.99. The reason I say it starts at, they come both with and without a heatsink. I've got the model without the heatsink. The one with the heatsink is going to set you back an extra $20. So the one, two, and four terabyte versions are available from today. There is also a 8 terabyte version coming in Q3 of this year. Taking a look at the specs, you will notice there is some slight differences in terms of the maximum speeds, depending on the capacity that you get. So the drive uses the 8th version of Samsung's VNAND TLC and their own in-house controller. The cache memory varies depending on the capacity of the drive. So the 1 terabyte drive has 1 gigabyte of LP DDR4X memory. Um, the 2 terabyte drive has 2 gigabytes. The 4 terabyte drive, 4 gigabytes, and the 8 terabyte drive will have 8 gigabytes. So another nice improvement that Samsung have made with the 9100 Pro is they have improved the power efficiency by 49% compared to the 990 Pro. So for the 2 terabyte version that I've got here, when the drive is active, during a read it will use 8.1 watts, and during writing only 7.9 watts. The terabytes written again varies depending on the capacity. For the 2 terabyte version that I've got here, it's 1200. And in terms of warranty, it's a five year warranty. Okay, enough talking, let's go ahead and get it unboxed. So a few important things to mention about installing the drive. The first is make sure your motherboard has a Gen 5 slot, because obviously if you put this into a Gen 4 slot, it's only gonna run at Gen 4 speeds. Another important thing to look at is, does the M.2 slot that you're planning to install your drive in share PCI lanes with your graphics card? Because in some motherboards it will, and actually installing the drive in that particular slot will reduce the PCI lanes for your graphics card down from 16 to 8. Now in this particular motherboard there's no limitations, we can put a drive in our top Gen 5 slot and have a full 16 lanes for our graphics card. Final thing to be aware of is check that you've got a decent heat sink on the slot as you're planning to put the drive in. Gen 5 drives do tend to run much hotter than Gen 4 drives. So this is a nice beefy heat sink that we've got here and should do a good job of keeping the drive cool. If you don't have a nice beefy heat sink like this, you might want to consider getting a version of the drive that comes with a heat sink. So we can go ahead and remove the heat sink. There's a little clip on the side in this particular motherboard and then we're simply able to pull the heat sink off. If you've got any heat pads at the back with plastic protection on them, or if there's any plastic protection on the back of the heat pads on your heat sink, make sure you remove them. Then we'll go ahead and insert our drive into the slot. We just need to insert it at a slight angle. And once we've got it in, there's a little clip here that's going to hold it in place. We just need to push the drive into it, and it's going to slot into place. And then we can replace the heat sink. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is head over to the Samsung Magician software. We can see that I've also got a 990 Pro, which is the flagship Gen 4 drive in the system and we've got our 9100 Pro here. We can see the drive temperatures, 24 on the Gen 4, 26 on the Gen 5 drive with both at idle. So you can see we haven't actually written any data to this drive and our drive is completely empty. If we want to run any performance testing, we're gonna be able to do it from here. So I'm just gonna check there's no firmware updates before we start, although I'm making this video a couple of weeks before launch, so there probably isn't gonna be. Okay, so you can see it's done a check for firmware. We're currently running the latest version for the firmware on both our drives. So next thing we need to do is get our 9100 Pro to show up in Windows. It's just our 990 Pro which is showing up. So we go down to the bottom in the search icon and we're going to type in disk management and we'll click on create and format hard disk partitions. A pop-up is going to come up asking us to initialize the new disk so we'll do this, click on OK. 
And you can see our drive is now showing up as unallocated space. So we're gonna right click on it and click new simple volume, next, next. It's gonna assign the drive to letter D. If we wanna change it, we can do it from the drop down menu, click next, and then we're just gonna name the drive and click next. And you'll see now that our drive is showing up in Windows, so we're able to do some benchmarking. Okay, so I'm gonna check the performance of our drive using Crystal Dismark. I'm just gonna keep an eye on the temperatures as we do this. So you can see our 9100 Pro here is currently at 31 degrees at idle. So we'll go ahead and select our D drive and we'll start the benchmark. Okay, so that's the benchmark complete for our two terabyte drive. The advertised maximum read speed is 14,700 and the advertised maximum write speed is 13,400. So we're a tiny bit below on the read speed, but a little bit above on the write speed. So pretty much what the drive is advertising. If we go over and take a look at our temperatures, the maximum temperature that our drive reached during that test was 46 degrees, which is pretty good. And just for comparison, I've run the same test on our Gen 4 drive, the 990 Pro, and you can see the difference in our read and write speeds. In terms of the temperature, this drive reached a maximum of 37 degrees during the test. So while the speeds the 9100 Pro offers are really impressive, the other thing that I'm really impressed with is the temperatures. I tested the Crystal T700 when it first came out, and although it's just a short benchmark, the Crystal Disk Mark test, it was running at 67 degrees during that benchmark. So certainly the power efficiency that Samsung have done with this drive is really impressive and the temperatures are so much lower during that short benchmark. Final thing to mention before rushing out to buy the drive is check you're actually gonna get a benefit with the blistering fast speeds. If you're planning on running benchmarks all day, then certainly you will, but actually what you're probably more interested in is the real world performance. When the T700 first came out from Crucial, I did test this and certainly there was no benefit to me over a good Gen 4 drive. Your workflow may well be different and you may benefit from these faster speeds, but that's certainly something to look into before rushing out to buy the drive. But if you are in the market for a fast Gen 5 drive, at the moment it looks like you can't do much better than the Samsung 9100 Pro. So I'll put some links to the product in the description. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well.